Thank you for watching and following TVS London. This is an online channel where we talk about sports and technology. We wanted to bring inspirational personals from this industry, from sports and technology, to talk about their inspirational journey so that their, their journey and their stories can give some inspiration to the young people. Spirit of cricket is one of the key themes in our cricket segment. We wanted to make sure the young generation, the young people learn about the spirit of cricket and what does it mean? And then they play with the game with the true spirit. We wanted to bring technology forefront of our discussions and we will bring some key leaders from the industry, from technology, from sports, to talk about the challenge and opportunities ahead and how we can adapt the new normal. Due to COVID-19, our life will be different. The things will be depending on technology. We wanted to make sure the sports are ready. We wanted to make sure the people, the young people, the coaches and the industry learn about how to adapt, how technology can help coaches, how technology can help players, and how the fans can have the excitement and experience without being in the ground. So we wanted to discuss all of them. Please follow us. Please contact us if you wanted to tell your inspirational stories and we will bring you in, in our discussions, in our program. And from you, there will be a lot of people who will be learning. Hello and welcome to cricket uh, uh, program today and uh, welcome to Spirit of Cricket with Rathan and we'll be talking about uh, virtual cricket today. Our topic is virtual cricket and specifically we'll be talking about the batting and uh, we have a fantastic uh, panel of guests today. We will be uh, expl introducing them uh, uh, pretty soon. Before that, uh, we had a panicking time in England yesterday that uh, we thought that either South Africa England game is going ahead or not, but it's luckily all the players who tested and including the support staff the hotel hotel uh, uh, management people all uh, tested uh, the result came negative and it's a great news that um, the england and uh, south africa series is going ahead as um, after cancelling one of the game so without a further ado i i just wanted to introduce my panel guest i think i have i have run a number of uh, program um, this platform but today is is quite unique because why it is unique uh there are there are top of the uh what do you call um in in coaching qualification we got the highest is level four i think we got about three of the level four coaches and mentor and the tutors are taking part in this in this program and also uh, i am level three and i think as uh, Pip silver was also level three and professional cricketer so that the people who are watching today, they will learn so much, so much about uh, some of the insight that we'll be talking about today. So please stay with us and share in your uh, timeline so that other people can learn about it. So I, I would like to introduce, to start with, one of our guests joining from uh, USA. Um, I'm introducing uh, Jalaluddin. Jalal bhai, Salaam alaikum. Well, how are you, Ratan? I am. I am fantastic. I am very good, Jalbai. Thank you very much for joining so early in the morning from Texas. Thank you very much for inviting me in your show. I am always happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Jalbai. I will. I will uh, bring you. Bring you back. I am just going to introduce with another brilliant personal who is uh, one of the key leader in the technology in sports in particular. So I am bringing Mark Garroway, Mark, director of uh, Millsville School. Mark, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Um, lovely to be in the opposition changing room at Millfield and uh, to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We'll be talking a uh, lot about cricket and, you know, there are a lot of new things this coming up. There are some debate also where you are one of the part of that debate. So that we will be talking about, about <laughs> this. Um, we will be uh, talking with uh, Steve Salute. I'm just introducing Steve Salute. Steve, uh, welcome to the program. Steve, first class cricketer, uh, uh, 
level three coach, run his lot of things. Steve, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Ratan. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, brilliant, Steve. Uh, thanks for your time. And you know that I know that uh, it is Saturday. It is not easy to you know just squeeze from the family. But yeah. thanks for your time. No problem at all. Good to be here. Uh, thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, I'm going to introduce Mr. Nazbul Abidin Fahim. Fahim, bye, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum Raton. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, uh, Fahim, Mr. Fahim is a chief uh, advisor of cricket for uh, Bangladesh Institute of Sports in uh, Bangladesh BKSP, and he was that, of course, uh, national game development manager for some times in uh, Bangladesh Cricket Board now, and he is uh, at the moment kindly working in um, BKSP, which is one of the breeding uh, place for the international sports personnel from Bangladesh. Fahim, bhai, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, Raton. Look forward to the program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to discuss about today, as I said, that we'll be talking about um, uh, some of your experience during this lockdown. And uh, to start with, I will ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jalal Bhai, uh, what is your, uh, what, what did you learn? What is the positive learning for you uh, during this uh, lockdown? Um, you know that we couldn't play cricket. People did things at the home. You did something at home, or not? Uh, what was the learning for for you? That's right, uh, uh, Ratan. Uh, this is because it, it altogether a new situation, and nobody was experienced before this this kind of a COVID nineteen era. So it's it's new, and uh, because uh, uh, it's new and uh, it's, it's threading as well, because uh, everybody was uh, scared about this. So that. If, if you have a thread, you can change it into opportunity. So I did it uh, so, and I utilize this very well uh, uh, as a as a being at a home. I watch a lot of videos. Uh, I I have I had a an online course which is uh, manager specialized specialization. So I utilize it because it is a change environment, and you have to adopt it, and and it's very person to person. Who ad adopt it? So I adopted it well, with positively, and I utilize it very well by doing uh, online courses and watching videos and and, and uh, discussion uh, discuss the things with the other pupils on, on the telephone on the on the on the on on uh, his conferences. So it was though difficult for because it's a change thing, but I converted it. As a threat to opportunity, and and I I'll do many things which I normally not do if if it is not the COVID era. So it's always uh, difficult, but if you take a challenge, you can utilize it, and I did it say in the same way. So I'm I, I'm uh, uh, make it uh, useful for me as well. So so it is all always difficult, but it you can take it as a challenge, or you can do it positively things, and I did it. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm in this point. I'll just bring uh, Steve Selud here. Steve, uh, you were um, doing a lot of coaching. You know, you you are director uh, of one of the cricket club. You played professional cricket. I know that you do a lot of one to one, a uh, lot of club coaching. How did you do all those things while since the since March? You know that we couldn't go out. We didn't do one to one. And what was the learning for you? Yeah, I think I think um, I think in the first instance, I think if we're all honest, we all perhaps panicked slightly. You know, I think it was quite difficult um, for people to get their head around how they were going to maintain um, the links with their clients or, um, you know, uh, the club to, to the clubs that we were involved in to continue to communicate with their members. And, um, it, you know, it, it was it was difficult. But I think what these sorts of t situations teach you to be is, I think, is resourceful. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we would have seen in the business world things like teams and uh, zooms and stuff like that things that we perhaps weren't quite so familiar with before become part of our everyday life and i think that was true as well um in the sporting world um we tried our best to maintain our communication with with players and, and members um through things like uh, online fitness programs um you know i think we, obviously we were allowed to go out weren't we through the, the initial lockdown for an hour a day and exercise but i think we were trying to give tips um, and and ideas to parents and how they might uh, be able to to train with their own children in that in that one hour that you had. Um, yeah, and and then obviously after the initial 
strict lockdown. The one to one stuff was allowed. Um, so we were doing that, but we were also able to do online sessions, um, you know, provided parents were uh, able to, able to, to throw balls at their kids or whatever. We were able to do stuff on video. And I think it's just brought the, the idea of using technology to the fore. And then it's probably going to allow us to continue to use that technology even as we hopefully now begin to return to normal. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, Mark, of course, you are um, you are uh, director of cricket for one of the uh, largest school, and I uh, know your school. I know that it is very sporty school. Uh, what did you do? What was your learning? Uh, Yeah, well, my personal learning was very similar to what, you, what you've just heard, really. You know, we, we were doing the same. We were on Microsoft Teams. We were hosting group sessions and also individual sessions. Uh, so it was brilliant to see the industry of the players coming out in their various workspaces. So we had a couple of our kids were operating out of their living room. We provided different types of balls for them to be able to use in an indoor space, and they adapted their practice. We came up with some ingenious ideas for practice which we're now using in our big indoor center next to me um and incorporating that which we wouldn't have even explored if we hadn't have had that situation and obviously it wasn't ideal but out of it comes opportunities that you've never had before technology being one of them as as, as steve has, has just mentioned but the th key thing for me was making sure that we all stayed connected during that period because it was quite easy for people to get isolated and uh, and we managed to do that. You know, one of my favourite days of the week was Tuesday at four o'clock, um, and we would have a group fielding session. Sixty people online. I would be running my fielding session out in my backyard, diving around on mattresses and all sorts of things like that. And it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so we did that throughout. There was two coaches working with our sixty players. It was non-stop. It was hard work. But off the back of it, we've got. Uh, probably increased engagement from a broader community back at the school and obviously now we're able to work with them but more importantly some of those ideas have carried over from lockdown uh, and now we're populating our normal cricket program yeah brilliant um and now lastly uh, i'll come back to mr Fahim and uh, of course Fahim, you are part of a huge institution and also you meant hundreds of coaches and i'm sure that you got hundreds of calls from various players and coaches to what to do, what can I keep myself free? So what was your learning from everybody and from yourself? Uh, thank you, Rathun. Uh, I don't think it's much different from what uh, the three panelists has already said. Uh, it has been very challenging. To start with, uh, it was really heartbreaking to learn, know that uh, we won't be able to play cricket for some time. And uh, initially, it was the idea was that probably three months, four months, six months, and probably we'll get back to field. But later on, we realized that it's going to be a long, long time. Um, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we and I thought that uh, uh, apart from the threats, we also had some opportunities here. And uh, what I did particularly was uh, took this opportunity to work with uh, the coaching staffs, as many coaches as possible. As you have told uh, already, that I uh, worked for the BKSP, one of the biggest institutes in the country, and where we have about 200 cricketers of different age groups male and female and who are uh, guided by about 25 coaches so we ourselves have a good number of coaches and players all over the country now they're staying all over the country now except for the coaches so uh, we, we've been trying to communicate with the players uh, uh, and trying to manage their training programs and uh, so, some good things has happened actually and uh, uh, we always we always wanted to have players uh, who thinks about thinking players people with good head on their shoulders and this COVID probably has done that a bit for us. Now, pe players are thinking for their own development. They're taking part in the program. They own uh, their program. And we are helping them out to continue with uh, whatever they have to do on a daily basis, regular basis. So communication has become a very important part of our uh, program now. And uh, with that, uh, like already uh, the panelists has mentioned about the using the tools, the various tools of communication and coaching, and uh, we're getting feedbacks from the players and giving them advices from our part. So both other things are on at the moment, working with the coaches, uh, developing the coach at the same time, uh, workshops, coaching programs for the coaches, and at the same time, 
consistently on a regular basis, communicating with the players and uh, watching them develop on their own, as a matter of fact, at the moment, because uh, 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 now the players are taking more uh, uh, initiative on their own, which is not a very regular practice. Uh, COVID has made us do that. So I think these are the pos some of the positives that have happened. But of course, we're very eagerly looking forward to the normalization of things. And I'm, I'm not sure whether things will get even normal as before, but uh, looking forward to come out on the ground, which is still looks far from now. Yeah, I think I think one of the uh, important thing that we all learned that we start communicating uh, with a lot of people that we we, we didn't communicate over, over a decade sometimes. All right. So that while we are locked down, people didn't have to do a lot of things. And you know that uh, uh, and communication is communication is a key for any success. You know, you need to have a good communi communication. So in our in our cricket uh, 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 area so that we, we have to have the communication now. From the lockdown experience, so that we we learned as as all of us we said that we use the remote coaching, we use the Zoom, we use the team, we use uh, various other tools. Sometimes I started with the Facebook Live, all right, when uh, March. Then I found out there is a Zoom, there is a something called Zoom, all right, and then this is how uh, uh, we started, all right, um, and and it's become now I know that without this I cannot live on. Uh, we have to have those things so that. What are the importance of uh, remote coaching? So that if we talked about, let's see, everybody does the remote coaching. How important it it would be going forward? So, uh, Mark, if you if you start about that, yeah, sure. So I think remote coaching creates opportunities, doesn't it, for us not necessarily to be next to the person. So the two things in this country, and I'm talking about the UK here, because of our weather more than anything is the fact that we have to be inside for seven months a year, which means we need to have facility. And secondly, we need to be standing next to each other. Well, this period that we have has proved that we can do that, but then we can have additional learning that goes on outside of that space as well, which creates extra learning chance. You know, So going back to Ericsson's stuff on 10,000 hours of practice, then we can be loading up those practice hours on top without necessarily being standing next to each other, without necessarily being within an indoor centre, which costs you know thousands of pounds to hire over the course of a winter. And that's been the benefit for me. So an example being we had a session last night uh, in the a session last night in the indoor centre. We've had a review online this morning, which has galvanized that learning. Um, similarly, going back to BatSense. Five of the players last night that practiced within our group of 10 used their bat sense. So they're getting that feedback as well. So they've got their feedback, they've got our review, they've got their own memories, they amalgamate that and a greater learning comes as a result. So, you know, I, I think it's brilliant that we can still do the remote coaching alongside our live coaching. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, Jalal Bhai, what do you think about, uh, about this remote coaching, either in Pakistan, is it now still widely uh, people are using and you in usa where you are now uh, especially in pakistan definitely they use or uh, still using uh, that technology or that remote coaching uh, though it is a, a new thing for the coaching setup because we are not regularly use this uh, uh, coaching uh, style uh, in, a, in a normal circumstances but covid 19 added this uh, uh, additional part of the coaching because uh, before we don't use much of this sort of a things but human connection is important you know that uh, uh, to so better is that that we should start uh, sometime as soon as possible normal coaching but it will be the uh, it will be the part in, in future as well because now it has started and it's an addition of the coaching setup so it's a good thing and uh, you can uh, in a covid 19 scenario you can uh, utilize it uh, maximum because you can you can, you you minimize the contact of the people and through this uh, um, remote coaching you can uh, teach the players and you can discuss the thing with them so it is a new addition in coaching setup uh, we ha all have to adopt it because it will remain there though when the uh, when the thing will be normal but even then it will be there and it is good for the player as well because otherwise in this uh, all, all, all whole year if, if you not utilize this, so they will be out of connection, out of contact. So that will be a not a good thing for the player and coaches. 
so it is new uh, addition of the coaching that is very useful for the everybody for the coaches or for the for the player and they are now used to of it that is the good thing initially it was a bit uh, difficult to uh, things manage as a as a remote coaching but now they all are used to it so 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 the ex, the the, uh, uh, the expansion of the coaching setup is increased so it's a good thing which give us give us to do this covid 19 era so yeah. it is an addition of the uh, in the coaching so it is very helpful for in during especially in these days but normal uh, uh, even in future it will be uh, remain there and we can utilize it properly yeah thank you um, uh, fine i'll come back to you about the similar question uh, like pakistan in bangladesh also probably you are doing the same thing is there anything differently you don't uh, done uh, or or how you think that that remote coaching going forward uh, 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 will be adopted by the coaches in particular plus the players in bangladesh setup uh, while during this lockdown from the experience i i think this is this is a blessing in disguise on this particular side because the coaches will use this method from here on even when covid is not there uh, so uh, it will stay this method of coaching will stay uh, coaching has expanded because of this opportunity uh, we are not doing any different uh, of course uh, facilities in bangladesh is far less than what you have in england but we are also trying to trying to set things up so that we can communicate with players and uh, we can use the resources whatever we have uh, at the place where the players are staying i'm talking about the about 200 players that are uh, uh, of bksb the national institute so they are they, they are uh, going through uh, the programs and uh, uh, the remote coaching is very going very strongly and uh, i think remote coaching will stay and uh, and uh, this method will uh, continue to be followed by the coaches Uh, i think it is very similar to what is happening in pakistan at the moment uh, not quite so much as uh, uh, in england uh, i think that's it yeah thank you thank you so steve uh, i i'll come back to you now uh, about mm. uh, your experience uh, about the remote coaching i know that you know that uh, we as a coaches we wanted to have a physical contact with and we 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 used to have all those way and the the things that uh, 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 Mr. Jalal and Mr. Faimi are saying that it gives us an opportunity. And how you put it in practice going forward? Yeah, I think I think just sort of to, to totally agree with with what's been said already. And I think with any sort of challenging situation comes the opportunity to innovate and to 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 do things that you need to do to survive. And I think some of these things will carry over, um, ignoring COVID going forward. As Mark quite rightly said, the guys are going to be putting in time. in order to be able to improve and obviously we always did things the way we did them didn't we we weren't we weren't challenged so we just did meet up and we did our sessions together and this is now giving us a chance to um utilize the technology to get people's hours up and in a, perhaps in a more efficient way so there and also crucially the the learning of guys training remotely and on their own has 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 forced them to be take a bit more ownership of their game as well and and be responsible for getting their training hours done or 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 doing their fitness work or whatever themselves without having the sort of to to fall back on the motivation of being in a group um so i think i think those kinds of things we should we should definitely be taking forward and i think as well look at you know historically even even again ignoring covid people go on tours don't they 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 spend time away maybe on holiday or whatever and in using uh, technology such as as bat sense and, and and video and these the, the things that have been mentioned already we can still do all of those things whilst not being in the same place and i think that's not that's not going to stop just when covid's over yeah yeah that that's that's right i think um uh, this is a this is a great learning for all of us uh, as as the coaches there are players and the play, parents everybody in every every single sector people learn different things and you know that and and we have to go on now uh mark you you discussed about you use the bad sense uh, in your in your session so that we'll come back come back to that little little later because we need, because our, our topic is betting all right so to to go there so i wanted to talk about the recent either it's a controversy or there was a young who was talking about glen maxwell playing uh, 360 degree shots either it should be played or not played and and you were part of 
some sort of development when Kevin Peterson developed his show. So can you go through that? And then I'll come back to Jalal Zai about it. Mark. Yeah, sure. Well, we were on tour in uh, New Zealand and we played uh, New Zealand on a drop-in pitch. You know, they have those drop-in pitches that go into the rugby grounds. And Scott Styrus, you might remember Scott, fantastic player, great batter, really good power hitter, but also bold, medium paces, keep it up with the stumps and sort of bold off cutters and what have you. And Kev basically batted for like 10 overs against Scott Styrus, tried to get him off the square, couldn't do it, ended up running two people out and then getting out himself. And he walked off the field and he said, that is never going to happen again. Um, so we actually played them on some really good wickets after that. We played at Napier and I think it was a tie, 300 and something, played 300 and something. And then we flew back after that series and we actually played them in the UK again. And we knew that the first game of the series was going to be at Durham. And Durham can be a little bit sticky and a little bit tacky. So basically, from the moment that Kev had that poor experience at the Westpac Stadium, we started to work on some strategies for the next time that that sort of thing happened against Scott Styrus, or it could be against the Chiminda Vass, or it could be against whoever the case may be. And so we started to work on him, but basically doing this switch hit thing. Well, my shoulder, because there was no sidearms in those days, so my shoulder has a nice scar on it now because I reckon I must have thrown, I don't know, 10,000 balls at this bloke over the course of four or five months in preparation for Scott Styrus's first ball in the ODI, which was the first ODI of the series up in Durham. And he turned around and he whacked it over what would have been extra cover for six. Um, and then, bizarrely, he did it third ball as well and hit it over deep mid off's head. Uh, for six as well. And that shot was sort of born, but actually he'd played it beforehand. He'd played it against Murali at Edgbaston a year and a half beforehand, basically because he wanted to dominate M Murali from ball one. And he went early with it, but it was that was a bit of a hack and he got away with it. Whereas this one was a body of work that was three, four months, uh, one shoulder operation and lots of, uh, lots of swearing when he missed it and lots of middle shots, which you know, started that. And the, and the same things that we're hearing this week, which we're going to talk about in a minute, about whether it's fair, whether it's in the spirit of the game, whether it's in the laws of the game, reared its head way back. And that was 2008. So I had that privileged position of being the bloke that uh, chucked loads of balls at a very good player who who discovered a way of doing things, which, you know, has, has led to, to what we've seen this week with 100 metre plus six. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, uh, Jalal Bhai, I'll come back to you now. Of course, now um, uh, I, I, I deliberately brought that today because we are talking about the batting and we'll be talking about technology in a bit so that uh, because this was one of the things that you wanted to discuss uh, today. So, I thought I'll, I'll get uh, Mark to get his view because he was the person who who was part of the development at, in the really early stage. So, uh, Jalal Bhai, you, you tell me now. Yeah, Your that's problem. why it is. Uh, Ratan is a very interesting debate now on. Uh, but I'll see the batting batsman point of view and the bowler's point of view because in modern days cricket, you know that you have to be uh, different all the time. That's why you can perform uh, in the difficult conditions. So this is a, some one sort of an innovation which is uh, someone is uh, uh, going to be perfect and he can utilize in the matches. So it's no harm. But anything which is uh, uh, according to biomechanics uh, and uh, they can be acceptable as their own technique. And if 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 a batsman utilize it, so no harm because batsman uh, batting is a close skill and he has to uh, he has to respond what bowlers do. So it is option of the batsman if 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 he can do response you know such any such delivery in a two way. So it is advantage for him and he can utilize it. And the bowler is a, you know, that open, is, open is skill and you, he can bowl anywhere he wants. Somebody is talking about the bowler and a batsman but because bowler is bound to be ball from right arm. Uh, and But he can bowl also off spin, leg spin. He, he doesn't know to tell the batsman, okay, I'm going to ball off spin or leg spin or even medium fast. So this is not a debate if a bowler is restricted for that and batsman is, is open for that. So, so it is a some sort of a good development, batsman point of view, 
and if he has an option to ball one ball in two different ways, it, that is his skill. And any skill which is close to the biomechanics, I mean the balance and not injury prone, he's acceptable as his own skill. So, so on in on his own on technique. So it is in my point of view, it's a good thing. And in modern day cricket, you have to every time you have to develop new things so that you can perform at a difficult conditions. So uh, I, I think it's, it should be continued. Uh, and uh, and and it should be acceptable as well as a as a rule than well because uh, yeah. as long as you know that uh, you don't change your stance before the ball are delivery i think that that should be still acceptable no after delivery you can do anything so yeah. i'll go back to uh, find by find by your thoughts on this yeah a very interesting topic and thanks to mark for the remarkable story actually and uh, it's not an easy skill to develop actually he, he said, talks about four months and 10,000 throws uh, and, and a shoulder operation. So uh, I think, I think I, I, what I see is that when a batsman comes down to the wicket and hit a ball, I don't see it any differently. Switch it and coming down to the wicket is the same to me because, because after the bowler has released the ball or has come to his bowling action, the ball, batsman is allowed to do anything. So I think it's a fair thing to do. And it's not an easy skill, actually. Uh, and everybody cannot learn it. Uh, I, I think I, I take it as an opportunity for the bowler. The bowler actually gets an opportunity where the batsman is using his wrong sides, improvising to that extent. It's an opportunity for the bowler to utilize that actually. So I think it should go on, and um, uh, uh, it should be encouraged, and it 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 gives a new flavor in batting, and uh, and it's very entertaining for the crowds as well. I think I think it, we should carry on with it. And also for the coaches, there's something that they need to throw. Now that we have now that we have flickers, and they think uh, <laughs> worry about what Mark had to do. So, yeah. um, uh, Steve, your, your your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I mean, look, I'm massively in favour of innovation uh, always. Um, so I, I just think it's fantastic. I think if it, and, and as everyone's quite rightly pointed out, this isn't easy, right? It's not like someone's taking a cheat option and doing something that's easy, that's affecting the game negatively. This is this is innovation, it's fun, it's, it's exciting, it shows incredible skill, and, uh, you know, on the back of, as, as uh, you know, Mark's story, hard work. So what can, what can possibly be wrong with that? Um, and as everyone's quite rightly pointed out, bowlers are allowed to vary off cutters, away swingers, whatever, bowling slower balls, quicker balls, bouncers. So if, if batters are able to, to put themselves in a, in a different position to hit the ball in a different area, that's fine. Um, it's pretty funny. Uh, I did a session with a kid this morning who was probably ramping the ball over the keeper's head better than he was hitting an off drive. So, so it's uh, it you know it's it, kids are excited by it and and anything that sort of generates fun and interest and creativity in the game, I think it's to be is to be applauded. Really, yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, I, I think we'll pause. Uh... <clears throat> this chapter over here, uh, we, we can talk more about it. I think innovation and other different types of shop. Of course, we are talking about batting today. And uh, I will be uh, talking a little bit more about uh, batting. There are a few things remotely players can Im improve. The few things remotely players can work on on, on those. Uh, Mark Garroway touched a little bit about the bat sense. And we'll talk about the bat sense, how that can help players without... Uh, you know, uh, 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 be in the field. Sometimes you can do things at your home, how uh, you can uh, shape up your uh, bat swing, uh, your bat speed and so on. So before that, I'll just play a, a short video clip and then we'll come back and talk about it. The question of what is smartcricket.com? Smartcricket.com is actually a movement which we started in 2016. Uh, we did a big experiment in 2017 during the Champions Trophy and now we are ready with the first product and we are also ready with a proper roadmap of what we are trying to do.
shot timing 98. Follow through angle 250 degrees. The little red thing that is on the that makes up all the valuable data. We we did rigorous testing. We have tested close to 50,000 shots by now, and we have a lab in Santa Clara in US, and we have a lab in in Bangalore. Does it affect in how you hold the bat? Not at all, because you never hold the bat where it actually is. You actually hold it slightly lower. If anything, actually, it gives you a little bit of a counterbalance. You see modern cricketers put a bit of tape around the top of their bat to give them a bit of cut counterbalance so that your bat, your hands fit in nice and snugly there. That's already done with this little bit of technology. It's a bit of technology there that basically picks up various things on the bat. So, for example, bat angle. Someone like Hashim Amla with his big twirly bat that he has at the top there, a little bit like the Jim Fury golf swing, he will have a big bat angle. Someone like MF Dhoni when, he, Dhoni when he goes to play the helicopter shot, he is going to have a big bat angle. Maybe someone slightly lower to the ground. Who am I thinking? Uh, some of the England batsmen maybe start a little bit lower. Jason Roy, people like that, have a lower bat angle. There's the one of the six, 71. To quite a few bats. The thing it picks up is bat speed. The amount of times we have done master classes talking to Virat Kohli or um, AB de Villiers about bat speed, what does that actually mean? It's all well and good saying, well, you've got fast hands, but how do you measure that bat speed? So, someone like me, a boring batsman, used to have very low bat speed. That's why the ball didn't go anywhere. But some of these guys, if you think Kohli, Kohli, when he plays the seamer, actually plays with firm wrists and doesn't create much bat speed. But when Kohli plays against the spinners, Kohli really generates a lot of wrist and bat speed through the ball. So what we've been able to do is actually quantify that. So maybe with Kohli against the seamers, his bat speed is good. Kohli against the spinners, his bat speed is absolutely phenomenal. But it's not just bat speed. You could have the most brilliant bat speed, but if it doesn't get there in the right time, then the ball doesn't go very well. So you also need the timing of the bat speed and this sensor picks up exactly when the timing is and hence how far the ball will go, how much impact it has on that cricket ball. So from this little bit of technology in the bat, we are picking up a whole different um, bits of information about how good batsmen are and how well they hit a cricket ball. Many bat sensors in many different ways and tell us how well a batsman times the ball and the measurement that we're using is the speed. You can seamlessly sync your bat sensor and start using the bat sensor with the same app. When we launch the shoe sensor and the ball sensor, the same app will seamlessly sync all the sensors and give you all the data with all sensors synced in time together. This is a revolution which is going to unfold and it will change the way training has been done so far. At this point of time, while I am speaking, training is more a gut feel of a coach. Now we'll convert in into real data. So I think I think this is a this is a brilliant uh, uh, innovation and uh, of course there are many other uh, innovative things are coming. Things become smarter and without now before I think about 10 years or maybe 15 years back without laptop or that computer, you cannot do anything now without any a, a smartphone, you cannot do anything. Uh, uh, in fact, the smartphone become your office. Uh, you got everything uh, in your smartphone. So now uh, in this technology, this small little device uh, with your app, you can do so much. So we'll, we'll talk about it. and. Uh, Everybody in this panel, I think somehow we used it, we understand it, and uh, uh, and we know about technology, how far it can go. But I'll come back to Mark because in his school, Mark used, you know, that with a wider uh, uh, 
players, you know, different uh, range of players uh, you use, Mark. So, Mark, what was the experience you found uh, using that bat sense in your school and what is the feedback you are getting? Well, the feedback's been great because let's be honest, I'm working with people that get this technology probably a lot better than I do and they access it a lot easier because they're between the ages of 13 and, and 18. So, um, you know, asking them to do anything with an app or an iPhone, quite an easy thing because it's been around them for the whole of their lives, unlike us, uh, where we have to learn it now. So that's the first thing. The second thing, but it gives them some context to when they're feeling something and when they're being coached something. And sometimes it checks and agrees with what, um, what they're being coached or what they think is happening. And sometimes it gives them a different view. Uh, and, and that's been the big thing for me. So I'll give you an example about a young player who has been working on lengthening his backswing. So I reckon I've worked with this kid on the same thing uh, for about three years and made about that much difference. And then within five sessions of using this, he would get to a point where his backswing we looked at was about 140 in terms of the angle, but it was going back. And we aimed to get up to 170. And within three sessions, he was going, that felt around 167. And it would be within one degree, what he was feeling would be in, within one degree of what was up on the phone because of, of bat sense. And, and that's exactly what the golfers do on the range with a, a really expensive bit of kit called Trackman. So they go on the driving range and they hit balls and they can tell everybody what the spin rate is. They can tell everybody what the uh, the angle of the, of the club or the speed of the hands or whatever is. And, and they get that feel because when they're out on the course on their own and they haven't got this technology next to them, they can associate the feel with the outcome. And that's exactly what's happening here. So this kid now can basically tell me what his bat lift angle is every time. And more important than that, because he's now got a bigger range for that bat to move through, he's generating extra speed with his hands. And guess what? We played in some cricket out in September and he started hitting fours and sixes in areas that he'd never accessed before. And that was been three years of work of which I made about that much difference. And then five sessions where we made about that much difference, just purely because he was able to work that out, get the feel for it, and away he went. So that's one example, but I've got countless, uh, Rattan. It's been a brilliant experience for us, and it's been a, a magical experience for some of the players because it takes away the need for me to be their eyes. And as we all know as coaches, you know, when we're sitting up on the balcony drinking our tea and doing the scorebook, it's not about us as coaches. They're out there on their own, and the more understanding, awareness, and feel that they have for their game, because of the way they practice, the more success they're going to have over a longer period of time. Yeah, that's that's brilliant story that you mentioned. That you know that with uh, with because we we can, we know that it's just seeing is believing. You know that once you once you see that once that video analysis come through, you know that people didn't understand that what they are doing. That once the coaches do the video and they showed them, all right, then they realize, oh, I was doing that. So that sometimes they don't believe coaches what coaches what trying to tell them. And now with the smartphone, every single session, they will be able to see the data. And uh, if I come back to uh, uh, find by uh, to you, uh, I know that uh, you you had a little look of this this technology. Just talk. No, if we don't talk about this technology, how this data can help a player in a grassroots level? Now we know that technology is available only. I think one or two percent of the global uh, uh, cricketers, maybe one person, maybe less than one person, all the fast class players. But if this can be accessible to grassroots, how that can change the way we bat overall? Thank you, Atun. I think I think it 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 can make a very big difference in the way we bat because, uh, uh, like you said, what we see, we believe. Uh, uh, not necessarily all the players uh, uh, can uh, can understand what the coaches are trying to say or follow the demonstrations. So not necessarily they always get the right picture. But what hap what's happening here is that they're getting uh, the feedbacks in numbers. They're getting pictures. They're getting angles. They're getting number uh, reputations. So they know about themselves more uh, 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 from this from this tool. So definitely, uh, when they have the right kind of feedbacks and the better understanding of themselves, that they can firmly believe 
in what they are supposed to do, what they have to do to, to improve themselves, uh, to strengthen their already strong side or to the weakened, uh, the weakest sides. So whatever it is. So they know better of themselves so that they can, uh, the pl they can plan for themselves. And they uh, start to own the whole process of coaching, actually. It's not only the coach's responsibility anymore. So they also be, be part of this system, the process. So that, that the learning becomes very quick. And uh, the ownership, the independence, independently taking responsibility, it also comes with the package. So I think it's a great move and uh, it's going to make a big difference uh, in, in the process that we, we develop players or we help the players uh, to develop them. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jalalha, if I come back to you, of course, uh, we've been, uh, Mark was talked about uh, uh, his experience and Feinberg was talking about uh, how this can make an impact. Uh, let's see, for example, you know that we, we have traditional coaches, all right? Uh, 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 those who now past 60, there are a number of past 60, past 50 coaches uh, all over the places. And sometimes they don't use the technology. For them, sometimes it is it is something shocking. So, what do you think about this? You know that all those coaches. What do you talk about all those coaches and the players are coming along? How how that can be bridged between uh, players and coaches to to make sure that the data that gets it's benefit <coughs> not only players, it benefit coaches to give a better feedback. As you talk about uh, the coaches about the age group, I'm also the on that age group. <laughs> but, Sorry, I I always, but, but, no, no, but I always, uh, one thing is uh, learn to understand that uh, in anything uh, in the world which is developing, if you're not adopt that, you will be uh, behind that, uh, that thing. So in, in cricket, if something developing, you have to adopt anyhow. So you can be keep abreast what, the, what is happening in the current situation. So the, any technology which is developing, we have to adopt if you want to be a coach or want to be a player in the current scenario. So it is very important. And uh, any technology which is, uh, in fact, providing the data and uh, 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 good technology providing more data and you have a more option to understand uh, the batting technique or a bowling technique. So ultimate decision is the coach so that that information you gather from the technology uh, and it's a good technology you have a more data so you can take your decision more accurately more perfectly so it is very important and those coaches uh, uh, not uh, adopting this new technology they will be uh, behind the the top coaches so anyhow everybody has to adopt if you want to be a uh, live in a current scenario he has to adopt and it is always useful uh, because uh, it will give you the information maximum information correct information then you can take your decision as a coach and uh, that help you the player as well because you take a good decision it will help the player as well so it is anyway it is important we have to adopt if you want to uh, coach in a current scenario we have to adopt new and modern techniques and modern technology that is always helpful for the coaches and uh, ultimately, decision has to be taken by the coach what, what he, he wants to be developed or what want to be modified in any, any player. So one thing I'll ask Mark, uh, because though it is batting, uh, we are talking about the batting, but what information it can give the baller as well. So he can, agar ex he can explain a little about the bowling information is through this technology. So it will be good for me as well. So it, in the end, I say everybody has to adopt what is uh, new technology is coming in, especially in cricket so he will be keep abreast for the current uh, scenario of the coaching and and otherwise he will be outdated so i am not outdated i am what i got free this smart uh, uh, kit from uh, during the uh, world cup and you uh, uh, give me this one free of charge that's thank you very much <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jalvai. Hopefully, that will be helpful for you. Now, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll come back about uh, your question to Mark that you mentioned. What information that data yeah. can help the bowlers? All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Steve, uh, uh, if you can just talk through your experience using in a, in this one and how how this can change and shape up the batsmen to improve their game. Yeah, I'm just sort of uh, I've had a similar experience to Mark on particularly on on 
working with guys trying to uh, improve the, the, the pickup of the bat. Um, and I think that this uh, has been, uh, has blown me away, to be honest. It's been absolutely incredible to be able to have some actual empirical data that kind of backs up perhaps some of the points that you're making as a coach. Um, but also I think it's important to, to, to sort of almost be humble as a coach as well, because we're not always completely right. And our instincts aren't always absolutely perfect. So being able to to look at the data, to gather the data, and look at the data can actually be an educational um, tool for the coach as well. So um, learning sort of what sort of things we're aiming for. Um, Mark mentioned going from sort of 140 to 170. Um, but, but that, that line, I think almost these, these developments are inevitable. It, it, in the same way we had a, a revolution of um, fitness and fielding in, in cricket in the 90s and 2000s, I think we're about to have a, a tech revolution um, in the use of technology um, in, in the sport. And, and, and I think the fact, you know, uh, the fact that guys have been doing it in golf for a while um, just, just lends itself to, to, to cricket. Playing a little bit of catch up here, I think. But I think, like I said, the, the use of this stuff is going to be it's going to be inevitable. And it's not there to replace the coach or to replace the coach's instinct. It's there to complement the coach and what the coach is doing and, and for the coach to embrace it um i think and i think anyone who who doesn't uh, you know as we quite rightly pointed out is going to be is going to be left behind yeah yeah so i i'll come back uh, uh, to mark about the question that uh, sir jalal was asking about either what information can uh, bowlers can get can you give some insight if there is anything I think Mark, uh, we just lost Mark. I think he will be joining. So I, I, I'll come back uh, on that. In fact, the data, it it's provides, it gives us uh, some sort of uh, uh, insight for the batsman to bat speed, bat angle, all those things. Uh, uh, I don't think there is a much to get for the bowlers in, at this particular time. But if bowlers can work very closely with that particular batsman and he might know what he's doing. But if I'm a batsman, I'm not going to share my strength and weaknesses to the bowler. Uh, uh, so in that case, probably bowler may not have that benefit. But there is a ball sensor is coming. So the one it comes, so it will be very useful for the bowler. So he can he can practice day in, day out uh, his, his uh, pace, his swing, and, and all those things that comes along with that. So that I'm going to take a quick break. And then within that break, I'm just trying to bring Mark back. And then we'll continue. Just stay with us. Thank you for watching and following TVS London. This is an online channel where we talk about sports and technology. We wanted to bring inspirational personals from this industry, from sports and technology, to talk about their inspirational journey so that their, their journey and their stories can give some inspiration to the young people. Spirit of Cricket is one of the key themes in our cricket segment. We wanted to make sure the young generation, the young people learn about the spirit of cricket and what does it mean. And then they play with the game with the true spirit. We wanted to bring technology forefront of our discussions. And we will bring some key leaders from the industry, from technology, from sports, to talk about the challenge and opportunities ahead and how we can adapt the new normal. Due to COVID-19, our life will be different the things will be depending on technology. We wanted to make sure the sports are ready. We wanted to make sure the people, the young people, the coaches and the industry learn about how to adapt, how technology can help coaches, how technology can help players and how the fans can have the excitement and experience without being in the ground. So we wanted to discuss all of them. Please follow us 
please contact us if you wanted to tell your inspirational stories and we will bring you in in our discussions in our program and from you there will be lot of people will be learning Uh, thank you. We had a quick break. Before the break, we are talking about the bad sense and its different dynamics. So I bring back our our guest again here. So, Mark, if you can just talk through about the different data that you get from this this bad sense and how this data can help a player to shape up his uh, batting and improve further. Can you just repeat that once more? I didn't quite catch that. My uh, my internet's gone a bit funny. All right, sorry. So I'm just asking you if if you can give a little bit details of the data that you receive uh, from the uh, bat sense, different parameters, and how that can help a player to shape up his game and become a better player. Um, Do you hear? I think I got some of the question. It's not not particularly clear, but how? I think the question is just give me a thumbs up. Um, <laughs> Uh, how will it help them shape up their game? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, in many ways, I, I think, I mean, I've mentioned the bat swing angle because lots of players are looking for additional power now in their game. Um, but actually on subtle things as well, it, it's really good for them to get an awareness of what the difference is in, in their check drive and how far the bat goes through and also the journey of the bat through that contact zone as to going all the way through with it as well because a lot of players when they're going all the way through with their shots so when we see somebody trying to hit a, a, a sort of classic cover drive i suppose they have the propensity to close the face just as they're making contact which means that they either miss uh miss the guy at extra cover um, and hit mid off instead of trying to beat extra cover um, and if they do that, the actual uh, data that we get shows them that they're closing the bat, uh, bat contact, uh, ball contact, which is so important. Now, we can tell them that until we're blue in the face sometimes, but they don't necessarily take it on. But if the numbers come out and show that minus figure at ball contact, then it means that they haven't got that, that square face. Obviously, somebody who plays a brilliant cover drive is my old mate, um, Michael Vaughan. He's got a great cover drive. And when he had a go on it the other day, we could see that his back face was absolutely square to the ball when he hit it. And then he followed through, whereas a lot of players choke their shots. So that's another example. Another good one is about what your bat does when you're sweeping. Now, I got coached many years ago, and I was a reasonable sweeper of a cricket ball, that we came from high to low. And now we're coaching people to go across the height and line of the ball a bit. So you can experiment with both the high and low and across the ball one with the numbers associated with the path, going on to the avatar and seeing how that works for each person. And then they choose their own preference, as opposed to being told that you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way. And I think the more that people build up their own frame of reference, they understand their game more, and they can prove it to themselves and maybe even to a coach that's doubting that that way is better than that way for them then that is a fantastic thing. And it helps to shape their own game rather than the game that maybe that individual coach wants them to play. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, um, uh, Steve, um, you know that we talked about data, you know that all the business talked about data, you know, the individual data, you know, business data, finance data. Now we are talking about the data from your, your cricket bat, data from your everyday training. So what does it mean for? Sometimes it, it, it doesn't mean anything to... A lot of people so how can you transform this data so that you understand that data then you put in a practice again to improve your data for your performance how do you do that i think i think um in in the first instance there is probably going to be a responsibility of the coach to, to help the player decipher the information that's coming through you know so I, as i said before i don't think the data or the or the or the technology replaces the coach. It just helps. It just gives people information that the coach and the player can use to, to back up what it is they're then going to go and do. So I think that that, that but I I feel like the way that this, the um the information is laid out um on the app with with BatSense in, in specifically it, it is really clear 
and and I think that it, it's gonna once the information's there and it's been decided, I think it's really really fantastic for the player to be able to, as we've all said, take a bit of ownership of their own game um, and and decide sort of which bits is going to work, which way of doing things is going to work best for them. Yeah, just uh, on that point, just I'll play a, a, a couple of seconds uh, clip how this data works in a video mode. Have a look. Yeah, I found that uh, uh, the video feature is uh, quite catchy and quite uh, lucrative. Uh, Mark, have you tried with the video feature uh, with your players? <laughs> Mark, can you hear us? I'll, 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 I'll come back to uh, 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 Steve. Did you uh, try the video features? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, I'm a bit newer to this than uh, than Mark probably is, but... Um, yeah, I think I think yeah, again, I do. I actually use it as the first thing I go to when I when I coach, um, and the main reason that I do that is because they love vision and that mm. captures them because it it creates six seconds bits of footage. Yeah, carry on. We can we can hear you. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, so that if I can talk about a little bit about the video feature, it's, it's capture only, it, it records on its own so that you, you, you set your camera, you don't need to have any operator. Uh, either you use the bowling machine or bowler, it captures only your motion into eight seconds. And then it's saved and you can play. So it is, it is, it is brilliant. Now I'll come back to uh, uh, Jalal Bhai. Uh, you know that if these sort of technologies, uh, now we are talking about the batting, let's focus only on batting, can be used by mass people across, you know, the across the world. Or, or maybe let's see if I talk about Pakistan. Do you think that overall batting standard in every single level will improve? Hello? Just, just hold on. You are in mute. Just. Uh, you are, you are mute again. Um, yeah. Okay. We are here. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it will help masses because that information uh, will guide the player or coaches so that can improve their batting. Uh, so uh, it, it is always helpful. But how it will be? In that, in the masses, it is it is a, maybe the planning of marketing or awareness. So that, that can be utilized everyone um, because it's not difficult. Everybody has now a smartphone and they can utilize it properly. So it is not a big challenge, but you have to be marketed and you have to be give awareness of the people at a, at a grassroots level. So they can utilize it. They, when they utilize it, they have a good information by itself and the coaches will also have the information they both can uh, can uh, gather and and uh, help the batsmen uh, to develop their game in an initial stage that is very good for them so it is always helpful but need to be give the awareness and uh, give the uh, uh, market uh, you, you the market it in the masses so it it will uh, helpful everywhere in the uh, test playing cricket or even non test playing cricket it will support the especially now we are talking about batting so it will help the bat batter to improve their batting through by themselves or by the help of the coach uh, with this technology. So I am sure if you will market it properly and, and you, uh, it, it will be reachable for everyone because it's not that expensive. Either. I think it is $100, something like that. It will be like a, a cost of a one cricket bat. So most of them can, uh, 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 most of them can uh, buy this, this, this uh, tool. So it will be uh, helpful then for the batting, and I'm uh, sure you need to be marketed properly. And and I'll try my best to be do uh, for some information here in America and and in Pakistan as well. So let's see. It takes some time, 
but yeah. definitely it will help you. So fine, but I'm come back to you about your institute, the BKSP, where you produce, uh, I think, 60 to 70 percent of uh, international players for football, cricket, hockey, and 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 so on. How you keep your data? Uh, what is your data management procedure at BKSP? Uh, we do we do it traditionally. Actually, we have uh, we use some uh, softwares, uh, analytical softwares. And uh, uh, in some cases, we do it manually, and we also use some technologies in, in that. Uh, but I will come to uh, come back to the discussion that we're having about uh, the vaccines. Uh, uh, I think I think the biggest one biggest difference it will make is that, especially in the subcontinent, uh, we we get to see a coach handling twenty players, twenty five players, thirty players, and it is very difficult to give individual attention to the players. What this device will do, this device will. Uh, let the coach know the players better. So once a player is uh, going through a training session or playing a match, immediately he can come back with all this data to his coach and share it with him. And and the coach within a very short time can give him enough feedback on on, on the available data, and thus he can he can uh, uh, attend individually. So individual attention uh, will be able to be uh, on the on the on the coaching program. So. Uh, that will probably be uh, a big help for any any player. Uh, so I think I think that will be a great thing uh, we, we we can expect out of this device. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, in BKSP and the institute, we still are not as uh, uh, as uh, as good as uh, utilizing these uh, technologies that uh, are used in the UK or in the USA. But uh, we're looking forward to using more and more uh, technologies. And um, uh, I think it's very important to have data and data of all sorts that you can have. But uh, of course, uh, it will be great to have bad since then. Thank you. Thanks for, to you for the one you gave to me. You gave me one. I've used it a bit, and it's been very useful. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I will, just we are uh, uh, conscious of time and we'll be finishing pretty soon. But I will come back to Mark. To uh, Mark, you are a, your role was a performance analyst from all those years, you know, that when the technology just coming into place. Uh, the video analysis and match analysis. Uh, Mark, can you hear us? I'm just w wondering either Mark can yeah. hear us. Well, I can ask one question from Fine by because I was uh, uh, there in BKSB in 2010 and I was okay. very impressed at that time. But what about the change now? Because 10 years uh, after, there's, there's something changed in the BKSB and uh, because I was take the team there. Yes, I took can the hear team you. We have we have two more cricket grounds and uh, we, have, we have more students and more coaches and uh, yes. and yeah we have seen some good things in BKSP yeah. and trying to trying to develop it further. We have two more regions now apart from the main head BKSP. We have two regions uh, in other parts of the country. So uh, yeah, we're moving forward. I came yeah. back from there. One, one minute. I came back from there and I wrote an article that that sort of a institution we should have in Pakistan, but still they don't have. <laughs> <After 10 years. laughs> but I'm glad that we have one. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll come back to Mark. Mark, can you hear us? Mark, can you hear me? Uh, we have some uh, connection uh, uh, issue with Mark. I think I can I can hear I can see Mark. It's, I think I think we lost Mark. So uh, uh, I would uh, I think wrap up this program now here. Uh, just before I I finish, I thank uh, everyone uh, for your for your valuable time uh, today. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking about more about different technology in in, in coming uh, weeks or months. And uh, Stay safe. And uh, if anybody wanted to say anything, I'll, I'll start from fine by if you're finishing remarks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's a very fruitful discussion, I would say. I, I, I'm sure that uh, we are not uh, in a normal situation now, and coaches need to be uh, innovative and do new things. And I think this has given us an opportunity to go look at new things. Uh, I look forward to that and uh, hope uh, uh, everyone is safe and uh, really meant connected for any yeah. future. Endeavors. Thank you, Ratan, yeah. for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Jalal Bhai. 
Thank you very much for inviting me. And this program is definitely very useful for the coaches, for the players, and very informative for everybody. So you you have organized it. Did you have organized this very well? Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Steve. Uh, just to say thanks very much for uh, inviting me, and um, a pleasure to speak to you all and listen to your uh, wise words. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Can you hear us now? I can, I think. I can. All right, okay. It's been a okay. bit dodgy, yeah. but I've heard, heard a lot. All right. So that Mark, I, I, I just, I before uh, you disappeared, uh, I, I wanted to ask you a question, which is, your role was a performance analyst for with England, and and uh, before that with the counties for for some times. And that time there was not much technology exists. Now there are so much of changes, uh, um, and how the technology moved from those days and now. And if you can just summarize that and going forward, what might it look like? Yeah, uh, so initially it was all about vision. That was the only thing that we had. So it was about having cameras, being able to analyze the opposition, being able to analyze our own players, work out the strategies and game plans that they would use within a game against somebody you know, like a Glenn McGrath, you know, we know where he's bowling it, but can we can we come up with some strategies for dealing with it? Um, and that was the starting point. And then it very much went on to the money ball model from baseball from the Oakland days. Um, and that was my time where I got out because it became mathematical. And if it's mathematics and me, no, I'm afraid not. So I got out and went back into coaching uh, at that point, but they've now worked on so many different ways of looking at a game and cutting it down. And I think we're seeing it now in T20 cricket, where batters are almost working out where somebody's going to bowl based on their history and what they bowl when. And as a result of that, the bowlers are now having to come up with different strategies based on data. And that is what we're looking at. We saw that the other day, didn't we? The the, uh, the codes up on the balcony off to Owen Morgan, we saw that. That's all data-based. I think the future of where we're going is all of that stuff is generally quite expensive and it's exclusive to the top end of the game. What is really encouraging for me as a coach is that there's now been um, uh, systems, apps, sensors that are going to start to in infiltrate the lower levels of the game, where we all start. You know, everybody's a club cricketer to start off with. And now with BatSense and the other initiatives that we're looking to bring over the next few years, it's going to be available at a very affordable price for everybody. You look at Hawkeye and all those things, only the top end can use those because they're such expensive bits of kit and they're brilliant. But this is a piece of kit which is accessible to everybody. You know, that if your bat's costing you £500, let's make it a smart bat by putting a £100 piece of kit on it. And every time you're your uh, £500 bat breaks, you take your smart thing off and stick it on your new £500 and that tells you how your bat's working as well. So it's going to be really exciting in the next few years to see the data and the vision that we've seen on television and the top end being everywhere. Yeah, uh, just just uh, one last point. Again, I think this is for everybody. Again, with your experience, that if this technology was present during Kevin Peterson, Andrew Flintoff, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Endostros, Michael Vaughan, those days, and would that would have made them better players or how they would have uh, done in your experience? Did you get my question? Well, I think it would have been very individual. <laughs> Because yeah. somebody, maybe if Andrew Flintoff, I would have need to have found a way to connect the technology to what he wanted. But somebody like Kevin Peterson would have been looking at those numbers and being competitive with himself. He would definitely, Kevin Peterson looks at numbers and goes, I'm going to beat that in my next training session. And that is the mentality that took him to being where he is. And what I hear about the likes of Sachin Tendulkar and, and Jack Callis and people like that who were brilliant players is they were always looking to better themselves and this bit of equipment will tell them a metric and then they would go in the next session and they'd beat it and that's how you get better it's almost an Olympic mentality that's what the Olympians do when they're training and cricketers will soon be able to do that themselves 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rathan, uh, Rathan, Rathan, one, one thing I want to add that uh, because now the technology is here, we should have marked the line between the before technology era and after the technology era, the stats should be separate for the players. So it will be really, we can consider properly because uh, before the uh, technology era, the stats are different and we should mark a line between uh, technology era before the technology era so we can consider them separately yeah yeah all right uh, and thank you right. mark and thank you everyone uh, for your time thank and you, uh, yeah. we look forward thank to you. seeing you uh, soon again uh, all right so thank you very much everybody thanks for watching and uh, we'll be coming back soon again to talk about some another topics with cricket and and sports technology thank you for watching thank you